Hi guys, um, I just wanted to let you guys in on a little secret that I found that has saved me a lot of work. Um, I am in the process of making some pear butter. Okay, just like you make apple butter, you just substitute the pears. Well, we have some pear trees out in the field at Peepaw's house, and so we uh, picked two and a half buckets yesterday, um, and we have peeled and chopped up one bucket and gave another half a bucket to a friend of ours, uh, a, a family that's friends of ours. And then this other bucket we have broken down to make into apple butter. Now, what I did, I found this awesome book, and I can't take all the credit. My stove's a mess, but try and forgive me. This is the picture inside. And I'm using their spiced apple butter recipe. Okay? I'm just using the pear version. And this is it up close. It calls for six pounds of apples, uh, two cups of apple cider. Um, and I did use the apple cider. Um, this particular version called for one and a half cups of sugar, and I did the cinnamon and the cloves. I didn't have any allspice, so I left that out, and the aniseed, that's optional. But I also looked at my ball recipe, and it is almost identical, okay? They are almost exactly the same, the measurements and everything, okay? Um... But I didn't want to go through the broken arm work of having to stir the pears for the longest and try and keep it from scorching to the bottom and all that. That's a lot of work for making jams and butters and things like that. So when I was reading this book, let me show you the front. Forgive my messy stove. Been canning like crazy. Um, it's called Canning for the New Generation. Bold, fresh flavors for the modern pantry. Okay. That's the name of the book. And it's by... Leanna Chris Chrisoff. Okay. All right. So that is the name of this book, and I found it. And she is really um, into not using pectin and that sort of thing. She likes to use apples in the place of pectin, uh, seeds and peelings and all that. And um, but when I read this re recipe, I thought, oh, well, this is, makes so much sense. She talks about how her mom is such a purist, and she would do it over an open fire, and, you know, it would take like three days of stirring, and all this kind of crazy mess, and I was like, dude, I'm not doing that. I've got four kids, and I've got a busy life, and I, I can't handle that, so what I did was I have taken my pears, in this particular case, you could do the same thing with apples, and I've put them in my crock pot, okay, and I put them in there overnight. I've got two crock pots here going. Um, I put them both on high, and I put the lids on them so that the pears would not scorch to the bottom. And I just left it going all night long on high. And what has happened is it has drawn all the juices, the lovely, lovely juices, out of that fruit. Okay, let me stir this around for you so you can see. Now, I only added two cups of apple cider. The rest of this is juice, and that was just to keep it from, you know... <clears throat> being so stuck to the bottom to give it a little bit of liquid so you could stir it around and whatnot. Then I added the sugar and the cinnamon and the cloves and it smells delicious. Okay. Well, the next step is you're going to blend it with your, in this case, I have a Hamilton Beach uh, immersion blender. Okay. And this one I have already blended. I just got through blending it a second ago and you can see how creamy and smooth that is. Now what I did was I cooked the cores in here. I used an apple core, actually. I cooked the cores in there, and um, when they got finished, I picked the cores out. I just pulled them out. I put them in a handkerchief, and I squeezed the juices through. Um, I really didn't get that much, so I think next time I do this, I won't even bother because I, I barely got just a dribble of juice because all the juices had already kicked out, you know, cooked out into the pears. So, this lovely, lovely, rich, yummy goodness, okay, is what I have. I'm going to stick the immersion blender in here and blend it. And I'm just letting it cook some of the, oh, there's, a, there's one of my cores, okay. I, all I did was pick these out so that I wouldn't have any seed stuff in there, okay. No hard, crunchy bits. Now, because what I did was... I took the skins and the cores out and I just put them right over here 
and this little handkerchief. Okay, and I'll just drop that one. And it tastes delicious, I have to tell you. It's so yummy. Mm. And good. Okay, I put them in a measuring cup like this, and I just squeezed it out as best I could. And it's more like a puree than anything of all these uh, cores and whatnot. I'm, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I'm just taking it out so that I won't have that um, seedy, grainy kind of texture in my smooth pear butter. Okay, because all the juices has really been cooked out of that already, so I'm not going to worry about squeezing out the last two drops because it's just so messy. Um, if you're worried about that and you want to squeeze out the last two two drops, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, I also have one of these sieves that is really good. You can see my mess from where I just strained it and everything. Kind of see what I'm doing here. I didn't get all that much juice out of that pulp that was left in the core but you can see what i'm doing here i've got a huge mess i've got to clean up when i get done with this but this pear butter is ready for me to jar up and i'm gonna let it just sit here and do its little simmer i mean it's not boiling or anything like that but it is nice and thick and i think i may use this technique mm -hmm. next time i go to make some jams okay at least to this point so that i don't have to do all the stirring there's no scorching whatsoever because the crock is so thick okay it's nice and heavy duty there's no you don't have any scorching whatsoever so i took i left the lids on all night then i took the lids off this morning and let all that vapor escape so that it could reduce down some okay um and my next step is i am going to jar this up can it I haven't decided what size jars yet. I'll have to look and see what all I have. But let me get, do a little taste test for you. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. That was just rich and got a little bit of kick from the cinnamon and the clove. Mm. That is so good. I have to tell you, that is awesome. That is way better than any store-bought pear or apple butter. That is so, mm. so tasty. All right, it's very rich in flavor. Okay, so I'm loving this recipe. I'm going to do another bucket of these pears probably today. Um, we're also making some hot cinnamon candy pears with some of the other that we have left. I have a huge bowl of uh, probably three pounds or so of pears that we're going to make into this cinnamon We call them cinnamon pickles, but it's cinnamon and red hots. It's kind of a candied pear type thing you can do it with cucumbers or watermelon rind or apples or, or pears whatever we're probably going to make some of that today and tomorrow so i've got a doctor's appointment to take the kids to today so i probably won't show y'all any more of that today but this turned out absolutely delicious it would be great for baking breads or cakes or just having with a piece of fresh baked bread oh it's gonna be so good okay so this is the easiest way in the world to make some apple butter and if you like her recipes you are i encourage you to get her book she doesn't use a lot of pectin so if you're an easy way out pectin kind of girl or or guy whichever um you might want to check that out but she has some really good um recipes in here and that sort of thing some stuff that you easy tips and things that you might not have thought of before okay i wanted to buy this really expensive preserve making gadget thing which is basically a crock pot with a stirring uh, adapter thingy paddle at the bottom but you really don't need to stir unless you just absolutely want to um, and I just like to stir sometimes but I don't want to stir for you know an hour straight because my arm feels like it's gonna fall off but anyways that's what your result is there's a little bit of residue left on that spoon that is good okay so enjoy try this out it is delicious